Hello. Can anyone around here speak basketball? There it is. It's the Confederacy of Dunks Basketball Podcast. Hello, bonjour. Whoa. Welcome to the Confederacy of Dunks Basketball, Basketball Podcast. Podcast. Uh, I am the host, Freddie Rivas, and who are you, sir? Producer Matt Dunks on the keys. Nice. Um, and besides, like, you know, upping our uh, <laughs> subscriber count on YouTube, how might how might folks help us? <laughs> uh, always always with the, the subscriptions and the ratings on the iTunes and the Stitcher yes. and the Player FM and... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, like anywhere you want to listen to your podcast, or podcast it, it would be appreciated. And uh, also, you can go to dunkspodcast.com. If you're old school like that, yeah, uh, you know, you want to download it and burn it to a CD, we're all for that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, we appreciate it. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Anything else? No, man, I'm, I'm, I'm pumped. It's uh it's like mid season or sorry. It's like, it's like the emptiest year of the NBA kind of calendar. Yeah. Um, yeah. or uh, emptiest time rather, but I think there's still a bunch of fun things to talk about. Oh, and, there's and, a lot. Absolutely. Yeah. There's a lot. Um, fun in both rage making. Ooh, I like Yo-hoo. it. Okay. Let's, let's, let's get, get going, these right? Guys on. Okay. So, uh, guest number one, uh, I've known him for a, a very long time. Um, he's, he's an excellent writer. He's a hilarious dude. He's got some sweet, like sweet, sweet Raptor swag on, uh, so sweet that it would make my brother Thomas, uh, Thomas Rivas, the swag expert, jealous. So Tom, oh. I'm gonna send you a pick of Chris. You're gonna like <laughs> it, it a lot. Up, put it up on on the Dunk socials, and also oh, yeah. we'll uh, we'll tag my man who made it. Oh, beautiful. Nice. Okay, um, yeah. Uh, if you're at home, give it up at home for Chris Dirt. <laughs> This is your your cool. Yeah, no, and I and I love it, and I appreciate it, and I'm fucking pumped about it. Yeah. Good. that was going through your head through the whole and parade. Absolutely, and That's because I messed up my head all day. Because I've been messing up intros, yeah. for a solid month straight. I didn't say that uh, you're, you're writing on Medium Sports. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm doing some sports writing on Medium. I used to do sports writing professionally, and now I'm trying to get back into it. Uh, you can get that at medium.com slash at Chris Dart, C-H-R-I-S-D-A-R-T. Also, if you want to hear me talk about or read me, I guess, talk about rap, sports, politics, uh, and professional wrestling, uh, which I guess is a sport or a politic. I don't know. It's a cool. Uh, it's both. You can get I'm on Twitter at, at Chris Dart, C-O-T-F. Uh, so, yeah, I got I got things. Beautiful, beautiful, Sweet. beautiful. Um, I mean... You know him. You love him. He's an OG of the pod. Yes. Co-founder uh, of yes. Confederacy of Dunks. He's locking it. He's rocking it in law school. You know what I mean? He's on <laughs> Bay Street. He's a lawyer. You know, like when, when the parade. His parents are proud of him. Oh, man. it's uh, He's just like tearing it up. Like sea walking all over the town, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> um, give it up at home for the one, the only, Kevin Douse. This is like him looking for things around the town with a magnifying glass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is him taking the bar. This yeah. Is, yeah, this is how this I is, answer this every is bar. My footsteps are falling with the beat to this. Um, do you think when you get called to the bar, it will perhaps be ants that you need to burn with a magnifying glass and that's the test? <laughs> I sincerely hope so because I like I've never done that in my life and I feel like it's a missing image you know what I mean but but you just treat it like it's that famous test where the professor's like why and you just write why not and people are like dude you were supposed to burn the ants (laughs) (laughs) what's up man how you doing yeah no uh, I'm good I'm uh I'm just got my feet up at home right now I'm uh I'm ready to talk some ball Going to be going to be heading out to the East Coast tomorrow. Ooh. Uh, you, you, you uh, going yeah, to the other side of the Don Valley or? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> so he's just a bit of a Toronto <laughs> joke yeah, there yeah. that only Matt laughed at. And I gave like my bob bobbling head yeah, to Chris. Yeah. Like I just made a you know, joke. I got it. I got it. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I know. Durham um, region. I heard, uh, I heard Diagon Alley like it was a Harry Potter reference. So I don't know what you actually said. I th- I, maybe I did say Dag and Alley. I tried to say Don Valley. Yeah, you did oh, say Don. Going Don, east to the Don. You said Don oh my Valley. God, you yeah. did say Don Valley. Wow. I mean, I blame I blame the phone. Since we're talking about you know uh, different Toronto areas, we should mention that we are not in the junction right now. This is our first <laughs> recording. Oh God! 
in the West Bend. West Bend. Which oh my God, is, uh, in West Bend? We're in West Bend. West Bend. Yeah. It's like Junction adjacent. It's like I know. Greater Junction. <laughs> Let me just like, for the for the folks at home though, we'll give you a quick boundary, okay? So uh, let's start on Bloor Street. You go from Dundas west to Keel, right? Yeah. That's the southern boundary. You yeah. want to head north? You go straight to Dundas and uh, Keel. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Dundas. Dundas and, oh, oh, I messed, yeah, I messed, messed this up. It up it's basically a, a triangle. That bend arc. gets you every time. Yeah, the bend, bend gets The me. bend gets you because yeah. Dundas West bends and therefore it that's right. crosses yeah. two different Shocks, places. Shocks, yeah. that's inside that's the West bend. bend. A&W, yeah. sorry, that's oh, outside of the bend. That's the junction. <laughs> junction junction people are real they're real fussy about what yeah, yeah i mean uh, yeah. this dude you over here you can't miss that yeah this dude over here matt duncan likes to let me know that i'm i'm no no longer in the junction no you're not oh my it hurts God. it hurts yeah. a bit you're oh technically in high park north but you are in the west bend there's a community here and i want you to get involved in it more the west hey, bend community i'm a west bender at heart. <laughs> there's a society okay, I'm into it. <laughs> okay let's uh let's get talking raps right yeah um, maddie would you give me that raptors sting hashtag rtz <laughs> sick yeah <laughs> that one sounded yeah, when i say bobby you say webster bobby webster Bobby Webster. Webster. <laughs> <laughs> Matt is like enjoying it even more that we're all reluctantly saying Webster. Now. I didn't know. I didn't know quite what was. I don't think I've been on the pod since since that was part of the thing. So I, was, I wasn't. I wasn't prepared. I wasn't ready at all. I was actually just looking uh, at back at the last episode you were on, Chris, and the first thing we said on it, it was back in last October, and it, uh, we said the Raptors are going to the finals. You heard it here first. Yeah. That was right. Episode 82. Cracked, cracked. Woo. Cheers to that. Yes. Cheers to that. Um, okay, let's uh let's get rolling here with um some uh Kyle Lowry uh long term um mm -hmm. conversation. So I'm just gonna read you a couple quotes here from uh interview Kyle did with uh Chris Mannix. So um I want to be there. Uh Kyle says, uh referring to Toronto. I would love to do an extension. But we'll see what happens. I would love to be there long term. We'll have the discussion when the time is right. Um, Kyle's obviously playing with Team USA this year. Uh, one, of, one of the only ones, it seems. <laughs> um, but he's playing because Kyle's Kyle. Um, so he also said free agency is free agency. So, you know, it's a little bit open-ended, I guess. But uh, he, yeah, then again, he said, I love when NBA players uh, get paid. I love the decisions guys are making for their happiness. At the end of the day, you have to be happy for them. He's referring to Leonard there. Right. So he's kind of going back and forth and saying, um, where's the quote I really wanted to read? He said something about us. He thinks he thinks we can contend, which, you know, might be a bit, might sound a bit silly to, to people, not me. Um, okay, here, here we go. Uh, we're still going to be able to run it back. We're the champions, and we're trying to defend our title. I'm confident with our team, he said. We are the champions no matter what. That will never be taken away from us. Never, ever. And, and by the way, when I read this in a different article, the quote had five evers. So he went, he, went, well, yeah. he went full Andre 3000. He's right. like, never, ever, ever, <laughs> ever, 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 ever. Yeah, it was good. Um, <laughs> so Chris, m maybe I'll just start with you. Sure. And um, I've, I've probably, I probably tipped my own opinion uh, pretty, yep. pretty clearly, but yeah. it is my podcast. So um, I think people know, but yeah, I mean, uh, how does that make you feel? We'll just go there. Fuck. It makes me feel deeply conflicted is the answer. Really? Okay. Yeah. Uh, because like, I love Kyle. Like I love him as a player. I don't know him as a person, but I love what he presents publicly as a person. Mm -hmm. I love that he has a bit of fuck you to him. I think he's a great player. I also think he is... 33 years old. Mm -hmm. He plays a, he's a, he's small by NBA standards. He plays a style of ball. that's very physical. Uh, I think Fred Van Vliet, who is a very similar player has made it quite clear that he sees himself as an NBA starting point guard. I think he's been pretty unambiguous in that. Right. And I think there's going to have to be a choice made. And like, I don't know. I, I, I need to see, um, Kyle Lowry's number raised at some point, you know, to the Raptors. I love him. Like, do I want to extend him until he's 
you know, 37 years old. And I mean, like, by the way, th this is athlete old. This is still younger than I am as a course, human person. Yes. But like athletes age differently. You know, like, do I want to do we want to extend him till he's 37 years old when we have a guy like Fred Van Vliet waiting in the wings? And then we have to make a decision about like he has to go somewhere like I, I hate to be the guy. Right. Hey. Like, I hate to be the asshole, but like you got to be true to yourself. I, be the guy. I, I also I'm like I'm wearing a Fred Van Vliet t-shirt right yeah. now also. So like like I I just think that maybe this is a thing that might not I don't think it's a good I don't think it needs to continue. Like I love Kyle. I think he could end his career happily somewhere else. So be so before I go to Kev, <laughs> yeah. Can I just say that like, like for, for or I mean can I just ask you for you does it come down to money? So he's getting paid 33 yeah, this sure. year. Um, and, you know, what, what, when it comes to next year, like for you, is it like, okay, obviously a hard no on 33. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. you know, if it was, let's say 15. I mean. Or if the price changes, does that change your calculus? I mean, it does and it doesn't, right? Because there's obviously money and there's obviously, you know, like. Or the, you're coming from the, like opportunity. The like, Anna sweepstakes. But yeah, I'm more coming from an opportunity perspective and a, and a generational perspective that we have this young point guard that like, you know, I think, I think is actually a very similar player in that he's, he's a bit small by NBA standards. He's a bit bulky. Uh, people don't necessarily, you know, he did, he didn't, he got a bit slept on, but he's a super competitor and he has a super high IQ player. And, and I just look at him and I go, well, shit, like I want him to start somewhere and I'd rather it was here. And I guess right. that's, that's more where I'm more looking at it from that perspective of, yeah. of who's got next. And I think at some point it's got to be Fred Van Vliet or he's going to go. And that would make me sad. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I guess it guess it does kind of get a bit dicey when you think about retaining them both. Yeah. 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 You're going to have a lot of free agents at the same time. Um, Kev, where, where, where are you yeah. on, on this? And, le, and, and, le, and let me just say this before I ask you as well. Um, uh, I'm looking at a, uh, uh, again, we'll, we'll touch on this a little bit later in the podcast as well, but NBA unrestricted free agents. And mm -hmm. were you aware that Kyle is number two after Anthony Davis? Well, yeah. In, in the next summer, he's the single best person on the market, <clears throat> not including yeah. Anthony Davis, it's, according to like these NBA rankings, because there's so many. Not a slight, this is not a slight on Lowry, but it's a pretty it's tough weird. looking, yeah. pretty rough looking. You UFA class. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's, 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 uh, uh, it's a hard, hard bunch. Well, yeah, Mark, Serge, Kyle, and Fred are all uh, in the top ten. Right. Sure. <laughs> sure. Sure. Um, sure. But yeah, that's kind of why I respond negatively to like like people, folks eager to trade these guys because yeah. I'm kind of like they're the best people we can have for the next couple of years. Right. So, I, but, yeah. but anyways, yeah. So 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 Kev, yeah. Like, what, what's your thoughts when you hear those Kyle Lowry quotes? So, I mean, I think I'm a little uh, farther. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little farther away from Chris there. Where I think, like, barring some insane contract demands, bring Kyle Lowry back no matter what. Right. Uh, I think. I think he needs to retire here. I think. I think I could see him being gracious and uh, and fading into the backup role as Fred takes over the starting role, and I think it would be a really good transition. Uh, I think it would be like a really good mentorship. It would be awesome. Yeah, I mean, like along very well, if he could be like a tough Jason Terry, like his shooting says that he can, he'll be able to be an effective player for like a couple more years. Exactly. I can, but I can see him like the thing is though, it depends what he's demanding. Cause if he's getting like 15 mil somewhere else, even I'm kind of like, Oh, right. Which I guess he probably is, but he's going to be 35. So maybe he's not. Yeah. Like for, for me, it comes down to, to money and it comes down to what is your, like your opportunity loss. So like, I feel yeah. like if, if, like if we are, if we, if we, if signing Kyle means we can't sign Fred, that can be a bit dicey to me. If yeah, exactly. we've I, I think Fred, Fred and Pascal, cause Pascal is an RFA yeah. in the off season. So like those are the two hundred percent, no question priorities for me. And then you go from there. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, I, I. I was listening. To, I think it was a dunked on uh, podcast, and uh, I, I. I was under the impression actually that Pascal, um, it would be advantageous, or it would just make sense to extend him in the year. Um, yeah. But basically, that only really makes sense if Pascal is interested in giving us a discount. 
Um, so right. apparently, you know, he will get to restricted free agency and the Raptors will just match whatever. Yeah. So Pascal's pretty set. Like, unless, yeah. I mean, I guess there's a situation where he's, he, he really underplays and then also gets overpaid. And, but I mean, based on his age and that sort of thing, it seems like he's, he's pretty locked up as far as the Raptors go. Fred's interesting yeah, though, because so. he's, he's getting paid eight or eight or nine a year right now. And yeah, he'll, he'll be 25 heading into that summer. And um, yeah, on top of that, he's also, I, I, th- I think we should learn, we'll learn a lot about this conversation this year. Yeah. Cause we'll correct. see, you know, yeah. if what Kevin says, it, we'll see if, if, if Kyle's being gracious, especially yeah. with, you know, there's no, there's no alpha there. Right. Um, in terms of no Kawhi. Right. So we're going to see kind of who takes charge between Pascal, uh, Gasol, and Kyle. Um, and I think we'll see how well he does or does not share the load. Right. Um, and I think we'll also be able to see if Fred is indeed a starter level player, which yeah. in, in my mind, I think he is, but I don't think that... Uh, like the goal, I think, I think the, he was afforded a lot of opportunity because he was on a really good team, much like the rest of the Raptors. Sure. Like, I don't think he goes head to head with Steph and wins. I think that he was on a team that had a million good defensive players and right. was able to really zero in on an assignment. Right. Um, but I love Fred and my name's Fred. Come on. Yeah. Sure. Um, <laughs> You know, so sometimes it's not more complicated than that, <laughs> no, right? No, sometimes that's all yeah. there is. So when you when you listen to Confederacy of Dunks basketball podcast, you're getting deep, deep right analysis. Sure, analysis. yeah, 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 yeah. Deep, I can't even pronounce the word analysis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, when Trump goes G United States, um, I feel like I just did that. Uh, okay. Um, I think an interesting subplot of the year is going to be like how how are our guys going to age because they're all like. This is maybe Gasol's last year or two. You know, Larry's looking at his last contract. Serge is sort of getting over that hump. So it's like, what are these, what are our old guys going to look like and how are they going to handle it? Yeah, I've, I've kind of, I've turned around a little bit on Serge where I think that he, his aging process was, he's not like as good uh, or, you know, as savvy as like Kyle and Mark. So he mm. doesn't have that weird thing where it's like, oh, maybe he'll be a starter until he retires. Right. I think Serge yeah. is like, no, I'm a bench player now. And, yep. and there'll be five good years of that mm. where, yeah, you know, that, I think there's a good chance of that. Like Serge will, you know, I, I can see him ending his career with playing like nine or 10 minutes a game and being a good nine or 10 minutes yep. a game. Um, and yeah, I think he's already, he's already started to head there. So, um, yeah, that, that's kind of where I am on Surge, but uh, I mean, yeah, anything's possible. They definitely are aging, and it was a really, really deep playoff run. Um, mm. Okay, let, let me go to the... I was just looking for the NBA schedule. I'm not sure if the whole schedule has been published or if we've just been kind of given some highlights. Um, I think we just gotten the highlights. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so then let me frame the question like this. Um, Raptors fans are always angling for respect. Yep. We, we, we count our... Our, uh, our nationally broadcast games. I know, I know last year we tied uh, Vince Carter's, uh, you know, his, his big season um, with 15 uh, with, uh, kind of like national uh, USA games. Um, but this year we get a Christmas Day game, yep. uh, which I think, you know, Raptors fans have been so upset about for such a long time that we got to say it. So we, we got I know there's people who listen to this podcast you know, they, they, they need, they need it said. And I think some people don't care, but I, you know, a lot of Raptors fans care, you know, the Canadian infer- inferiority complex comes in and, and we, you know, we never get the respect from the States. Um, in a lot of people's oh, yeah. uh, uh, opinion, but, but I, I kind of think that, you know, you have the December 11th, uh, Kawhi Leonard game. Um, mm-hmm. but I, I'm really, really pumped that for our ring ceremony game, we're getting Zion. Yeah, like no, I, I've watched, yeah. I've watched LeBron's first game many times, and I think maybe we should all just stop comparing Zion to LeBron, so we don't very ru- different player. Yeah, very different, and, and I think it could ruin his career if if we if we only we were expecting him to be LeBron. Um, yeah, but yeah, I, a total, I mean, I mean, an amazing. He'll be an amazing player. He is an amazing player. He's a totally different style yeah. of basketball player than LeBron, and that's a weird comparison. It is. Yeah, I think maybe there. I think. I think it starts and ends with their large frame sure. and athleticism. 
Sure. Um, because, well, yeah, LeBron's like was a passer shooter, kind of like Magic Johnson-y guy. Yep. Um, and Zion looks a lot more like, I don't know, Charles Barkley. Yeah, yeah, um, I was thinking Larry yeah. Johnson. Or, yeah, Larry Johnson or Sean Kemp or something. Yeah. But, uh, okay, Kev, I'll go, to you, uh, I'll go to you first. Is there like a schedule highlight um, uh, out of what I've mentioned so far? Or maybe is there like, you know, are you still, you care more about the DeMar game or? I yeah. think it's got to be the Christmas Day game. I think there's no... There's everything, everything you said is very exciting, but the Christmas day game is like in my comprehension of basketball fandom of like what that means. It's the first time it's ever happened. You know, I know it's happened. It happened in one with Vince, like mm-hmm. so it's, ha- it's not completely unprecedented, but I think for a lot of basketball fans, um, it's the first time it's happening for, for them, for the, for this sort of like, newer generation of Raptors fans. Right. And it's, um, it's a pretty big status thing. Absolutely. No and question. I also, honestly, when Kawhi didn't sign, I thought that was that for the Christmas game. <laughs> I, I, That's I fair. They were like, okay, never mind. Yeah. Um, um, so yeah, I'm very, very happy it's happening. Um, and really, really stoked to see, I don't know what all the fanfare is like and just what it feels like to be watching. Like, Cause Christmas day is the best game. Best Absolutely. Year for basketball. You're Absolutely. In your jammies all day, you know? Oh, yeah. And beautiful. I have full on like merged into one of those people where I'm like, guess what? I don't care that much about Christmas and I'm not going to pretend I do, but I love basketball. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I usually go to the States and it's, it's pretty well known that I'm a hardcore basketball fan. So people are pretty down with me watching a ton of basketball and I definitely do. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. for sure. For sure. It, Quintuple header is such a big part of my holidays now. You're right. Like I was yeah. in London. You really like, saved that family Christmas, uh, like day at the house. You know. Yeah, I, I was in London at my in law at my in laws just watching like watching 14 hours of basketball, and everybody was surprisingly cool with it, and started to get into <laughs> it. And they're not basketball people, so that's all right. Yeah, um, amazing. Yeah, I'm with I'm with Kevin on this. Yeah, no, I, I mean I think it's like one of those things where like Mike, I I just brought it up to talk about it, but it's not it's not a legit question. Or m- maybe for some people they're like, no, the Kawhi game. Yeah, no, I think there are people for whom the Kawhi game is the game. And I think like for me, like I didn't get to see DeRozan last year, so um, with my season seats, if I don't if I get like third or fourth overall pick, like I'll probably go see San Antonio. Like I, I I'd yeah. love to I'd love to pay my own personal respects to DeRozan. Sure, you know? sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Um, when is when do the Clippers come to Toronto? The the eleventh. Uh, that's a de- that's December eleventh. December 11th. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So, so we'll another see. Another thing of it too is that I don't think I'd go to that Christmas game because just the logistics of it is very hard. Um, but I'll like I would go to that Kawhi game and that would be like very 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 high on my list of games to go to. Yeah, I'm nervous about the Kawhi game because I think it's a pretty good target for some load management. Yeah, 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 yeah. Correct. And I think, I mean, we'll see that. I mean, well, we've we've already kind of touched on this in previous episodes, but that's going to be very interesting, both league wide. You know, when Sean yeah. Woodley from the Locked On uh, Network was on the podcast, and I've heard I've heard him say it a couple of subsequent times. But Embiid is a wonderful candidate for load management. Uh, I mean, he and, yeah, requires my it. Goodness. And I, I'd be, I, I honestly, the NBA is so smart. I would be shocked if like there weren't 15 players on a Kawhi like schedule next year. Absolutely. Um, it just worked yeah. so obviously. And it's a very obvious thing. Um, and I think that if it's all about winning and, and you're, especially if you're in the Eastern conference and you don't have to worry about making the playoffs. Right. Like, sure. Um, then oh, I mean, why not? Right. When well, you get to play the Knicks four fucking times a year, like, yeah, you, exactly. you might as well yeah. rest your stars <laughs> for all of them. I know. It's uh, people will come up to me like, "Oh, you think the Raptors are going to make the playoffs in the East after Kawhi?" It's like, <laughs> it's like oh, you, you don't watch much basketball oh because like, there's like, there's a guaranteed sixteen wins with like five teams that are all trying to lose. Yeah, absolutely. Like, like there's some heinous teams in the East. I think the worst. Um, I think their worst playoff seating is sixth. Is yes, is six. Yeah, six. Yes. yes. Six yeah, if we have yeah. serious injuries to yeah. like yeah. Gasol, Ibaka, yeah. and Lowry. Um yeah, no, I I couldn't agree more. Uh okay, here's a fun one that I, I don't know if you guys um yeah, maybe that maybe it's a bit of a like a non answer as well, but um I was thinking about, you know, with Raptors fans, I think probably I don't know when it started, maybe like Mighty Mouse? 
Um, I don't know how how viciously we booed him, but you know, you got Mighty Mouse, Vince, I think, um, sort of Bosch. no, obviously not. Marcus DeRozan. Camby fucking Mark, got it. Marcus Camby, yes. A T Mac, T Mac, T Mac fucking got it. So, who is that now? We just won a championship, yeah. and Kawhi and Danny are pretty freaking lovable guys, yeah. I think, and they won us a championship. Like you cannot be mad yeah. at them. I can't, I can't. So be, yeah. So get Chris. I'll, th- I'll throw to you. Is there like a Raptors? Who are the Boo Birds gonna boo? Uh, well, this is an interesting one because it's nobody on the court. But I think Ooh. anytime. Uh, any of those American sports media talking heads come through Toronto, I think they're going to get fucked. I think they are going to get... I hope so. I think they are going to get... Like, if they are shooting inside Scotiabank, I think they are going to have a real security... Like, I'm not joking. Like, not violence. Uh, right. But I think with people trying to, like, disrupt shots. So, like, who, who are we talking? Stephen A.? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, he's I, trolled pretty hard. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Steve. I mean, he's kind of asked for it, but I think like he's basically a wrestler, by the way. Yeah, no, I fully I know, appreciate I know, I know. Stephen he's, A. He's, especially when you see him interviewed about other uh, stuff, you're like, he's oh Kevin my, Nash, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, he's ridiculous. Yeah, but like, I think Stephen A. Like, I think uh, you know, if if Ryan Hollins for any reason is here, Ryan I, Hollins. Oh my God, uh, Chris Broussard. Like I think uh, yeah. Max Kellerman. I think any of oh those guys because yeah. they all sat there and li- I am. Oh, I have so much. Buried rage about let it out. Oh, because like, let it listen, out. they <laughs> throughout the whole playoffs, they sat there and they doubted and disrespected Toronto. Like like Toronto, you know, like they were gonna they were gonna lose to Philadelphia and they were gonna lose to Milwaukee, and then there was yeah. no way they were getting past Golden State. And then they got past Golden State, and finally I go, well, well, fuck, this has to be it, right? And well, then the narrative immediately ca- immediately the switches yeah. to Kawhi's leaving, and 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 they sat there and they all. You know, and the, and and like the, they all just like they they were so horny for him to go to the Lakers. <laughs> yeah, it just like like yeah, I, I I think I think that's the enemy because I can't get mad because you know I'm doing this thing now that I think fans need to do more, where we remember pro athletes are human people. Yes, and like yes. I can't get mad at Kawhi Leonard for wanting to be close to his family. Absolutely like, not. Like at the end of the day, I and mean, you know whatever Uncle Dennis may or may not have said to Masai and Bobby Webster, or whatever. At the end of the day, that's what mattered to Kawhi was he wanted to be on the West Coast. He wanted to be close to his family, and I yeah, can't get upset there, with there's that. There's not much you can do about that, right? Yeah, exactly. And 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 Danny Green has a very specific niche in the NBA ecosystem where he is an excellent role player on championship level mm-hmm. teams. That is what he does. And I can't get mad at him for not sticking around with the Raptors, who I know you think are still going to run it back. But like, I, yeah. I think are a playoff team, but not a championship caliber team. Right. I can't get mad at him for going to do what, what he does, yeah. you know? And it was, it was a money thing too with Danny. Yeah. Because I feel yeah, like exactly. he wanted we that. couldn't have given him what he got. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Go, go ahead, Kev. I was going to say, we couldn't have given him what he got. He was, he was going to get, I, I would have been surprised if we were man, if we were able to get him, even if we had resigned Kawhi. And he said he was saying that that was such a factor for him. Then, like, the only way he would have been able to, be able to stay was with a massive pay cut, right? Yeah, which you know, good for him for not uh, not going that route. No, no, because okay, he so, deserves it. So, so Chris, I line, love this answer because, like, if if we, so, but that also requires like an intelligent fan base. Like, if we like, if the Clippers come. We should for sure prepare like a Lawrence Frank chant, yeah. Steve Ballmer chant, like micro not. Yeah, you know yeah I mean? absolutely, like absolutely. But like, <laughs> like I can't get mad at anybody on the court right now. But I have, I am more than ever an angry Canadian Raptors fan about the U.S. sports media. Like, oh, I like it. Like the the treatment they received during the playoffs was absurd. Disrespect. Disrespect. Uh, Kev. Yeah. Who's who? The Boo Birds gonna boo? I mean, that's a really good answer from Chris right there, but uh, so I, I won't. The suits. Um, I can't try and top that. He's pretty, it's pretty bang on for, for my taste. But yeah. um, no, I was thinking that, I think that Philly's still going to, people are going to remember that Philly series and, and be dunking and windmilling. Yeah. And I think we're, I think we're going to give it back to them a little bit, seeing like, remember I know. Game seven? Um, so I have a feeling that could be a thing. It's funny with the Bucks. There was never really that animosity. It was such a respectful like. I can't oh, hate. I can't oh, hate these that teams team. Are really I can't good. Hate I like the Bucks are so fun, and Giannis is amazing. Middleton's great. Like, yeah. Should, are are so, people gonna like like uh, when Bud gets introduced? Are people gonna like yell like uh, rub his shoulder, rub <laughs> his shoulder, yeah. something yeah. like that? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, <clears throat> 
But, but yeah, or like, but yeah, and I, th I think I, so I, I, I'm with you. I think we're like minded in that way, Kev, because I think it is Joel Embiid, um, because of the crying and because of the airplane. But what, what hurts me about that is because the reason I think that is more realistic than Chris's answers, because I think a lot of Raptors fans are petty and, right. and the yeah. people that Chris is talking about are the people who actually deserve it so much. Yeah. But I think that yeah, like I agree. someone who doesn't deserve it might be the person who gets it. I mean, like, I can't get, like, I mean, Embiid was kind of an asshole, but also I can't get mad at him because his health situation is punishment enough for being that level of an asshole. He's and, a brilliant basketball player made entirely yeah. out of glass as far as I can and, tell. And he lost, too. Like, yeah, he lost. Losing in that and, dramatic yeah, exactly. fashion is like, man, like, and if if we're... I actually straight yeah. up love Embiid and his antics, personally. I love a good, smart mouth, like, kind of jerk bag. I even run hot and cold on Draymond, who really aggravates me. But then seeing him and Lowry playing against each other, I was like, oh, no, I love Draymond. Ridiculous bullshit is fun. It's very yeah, fun. Exactly. I, I only, yeah. only time I don't like it with Embiid is when it like when it's like heads into bully territory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yes. with the yeah, Twitter like, stuff. Oh, there was one guy who kept making, oh, was it Drummond maybe? He or really it? like... Where it was like, oh, this is getting weird, maybe. Yeah, like he. I can't remember who it was. It was someone last year. I think it might have been Drummond. No, it was Drummond, and he kind of like. Yeah. I don't know, like Drummond, like you, you know, when someone kind of is like not as good with words, and they're not like great at defending themselves. So yeah. it's kind of like a stop, stop. He's already dead moment. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, was, exactly. it was a bit of that because, yeah, like I liked it when it was on the court. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and I also I, I'm never a fan of someone who only trash talks people who they know they're better than, you know? Yeah. So for Embiid, it's like, well, why don't you trash talk a soul? Cause he's school dress. Yeah, exactly. Right. And, and, and that also is a little bit like, I don't know. I feel like that there's some KG stuff in there where KG always picked on the weaker guys. Um, yeah. And KG never went at Shaq or he never no. went at Duncan um, because those guys whooped his ass. And I, and I think that yeah. that was, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm never crazy about that. Um, but I feel like these are pretty good answers. Matt, is there any... You like to boo, right? <laughs> <laughs> I like to boo. What are you talking about? Um, um, yeah, I'm going to boo somebody. Who? No, I'm not. That's gonna, what I'm asking. Uh, <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> um, I think that... I, I think I've mentioned this kind of idea before, but I think that uh, not saying anything at all can have more of an impact. Oh my God. Can you imagine if we like silently iced out somebody? That would be great. Oh, like, <laughs> Kawhi Leonard. And it's just arena. silent just, in the whole arena. We just look at him. Lead. Oh my God. Just one like, <laughs> that would be amazing. Well, Everyone simultaneously turns their back. <laughs> That's Which what team, I want. Uh, Indiana had a bunch of organized chant chance and they like when they played LA they're like you'll be traded or something like, for like Ingram and stuff and I'm like oh my god that's like I think it was LeBron's gonna trade you oh LeBron's that's even worse oh yeah that's, that's really bad that's deadly and I love that so that was much. really mean that's mean but also that I feel like that's fair game yeah I mean also like, accurate yes yeah, right? so, yeah. um yeah. okay let's uh is there any more Raptors stuff you guys want to hop on here before we go to the NBA mm. No, I think I'm feeling I'm strong. For after. Feeling strong? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, Maddie, would you give me that NBA sting? National, National Basketball, Basketball Association. Association. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Hey. <laughs> Those um, stings are so money. <laughs> oh, buddy. We got some money, money stings from Maddie D. Um, uh, oh, dear. So let's uh, let's get going on. Uh, I think it can only be referred to as an onslaught of dropouts. Mm -hmm. um, this is like the oh, last yeah. the last week of grade eight after you had the graduation dance. <laughs> you know what I mean? No one is showing up. Yeah. And if you do show up, <laughs> maybe you're a bit of a loser. Like, no, <laughs> so you're, you're not, obviously, but it's it's gotten. No, no, I was. <laughs> I'm referring to Chris yeah, no, directly. I, I promise in grade eight, yes, I was. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean, I wish I could say I was a loser in grade eight, but I was like pretty much skateboarding all, all around town. So yeah, yeah, yeah. let's say <laughs> King I, of Ajax. I was a loser. Um, <laughs> no, okay. I mean, uh, I, I got the NBA Canadian players uh, here, um, and there's a long, long list of, of Canadian players in the NBA. <clears throat> 
but the list of p- players uh, who are going to come to FIBA are extremely short. Like me, me and Chris are, we're talking about it. So four look, and a half, four and a half. So, so who, who are we talking? We're talking Kelly Olenek. Yep. Uh, Candace Luis Scola. Cause he's much better playing for the national nice. team. He's first club. <laughs> uh, Corey Joseph, captain Canada. Yep. There was apparently a rumor where rich Paul was telling people that Corey wasn't going to play. Cause everybody else wasn't going to play. And Corey, this is what I'm This is what I read called Nick nurse and was like, no, no, I'm in, uh, Cam Birch of the Orlando magic. Um, Chris Boucher, and then the half is O'Shea Brissett, who's on either an Exhibit 10 or a two-way or some shit. Right. Um, so, oh, and Kyle Wilcher, who is now in Europe, but did did play some some games with Houston a couple seasons ago. Right. Yeah, so I think I think where I'm at with this, and, you know, I'm kind of just, like, like jumping on my own hypothetical question, is the more I kind of focus on players being humans and explore their agency. It's, it's kind of a, a dual feeling here because in one hand, this is a massive part of their lives. And, and so many of these guys are rookies. Like I'm looking yeah. at, you know, Nikhil Alexander Walker, RJ Barrett. Um, who else we got here? Uh, Mariel Shayok. Yeah. Um, uh, you said O'Shea Brissett. Uh, uh, Lugans Dort. Ignis uh, Bradzikis. Um, uh, he, now he's an interesting one because he, Clark. he was born in Lithuania. He was never on. He wants to play for Team Lithuania, even though he grew up in Oakville. Oh, wow. Bradzikis wants to, wants to, he wants to, he, I mean, that was what he said at the beginning of this year. Now, huh. I think he's going to go play with RJ Barrett, the Knicks, and RJ Barrett is going to, is going to, is going to hard sell him because his dad is the GM of the program. Yes. But the last I heard, Iggy Razekis, uh, his goal was to play for Lithuania. And then there's also this guy for the Clippers, um, and I'll work on this pronunciation, but um, Fiondu Cabangeli. I think it's Fiondu Cabangeli. He is. Um, He's uh, pretty good, right? Yeah. Well, yes. you know who his uncle is? No. Dikembe Mutombo. Oh, wow. Ah. Okay. His, his mom is Dikembe Mutombo's sister. Uh, he grew up, but he's from Burlington. It's very. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, I th- I, no, I'm not 100% sure my pronunciation is correct, but that's what I heard. So I'm try- we're all trying our best here. So yeah, is this If just- he wants to like get at me at Twitter and tell me how to pronounce his name, I would be thrilled because I'm a huge fucking fan already. Yeah, we're fans. If we pronounce the names mm-hmm. wrong, guess what? Um, we're happy to hear from you still. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. No, for sure. <laughs> uh, Kevin, yeah, maybe I'll just kind of lob this at you. Um, is yeah. this like a problem or is this just unfortunate timing? What's your take? Uh, I mean, so I, I'm a, uh, I have two answers for that, I guess. It's not a problem. Uh, I mean, it's a problem for Canada, like, winning games. Um, but I think it's not a problem, and I think it's not a problem for a couple of reasons. I think it's just sort of unlucky timing in that, you know, Murray's got an ankle tweak, and he's, everyone's got, like, their pretty important seasons coming up with their in the rookie season, and Murray, you know, he's starting to get, like, really rolling in his career here. And, you know, you don't, like... I don't fault any of these guys for not risking anything for like to play for the national team. It's a nice thing to do if you want to do it and all the power to the guys who want to do it. I personally like, I think it's a valuable thing. I think it's good. I think it's useful for the country, but I also don't have any sort of nationalistic pride. Really? I don't really like, it's fun to watch and to cheer for, but I don't really care about Canada basketball, if it means that any of those guys are hampered in the NBA season. Um, so I'm sort of, yeah, I'm a little, I'm a little cold on, uh, on, on international ball, I guess. It, it, Stay it, cold, pony boy. Stay cold. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry. I thought that was way funnier than it actually I is. Smile. It's yeah. quite solid. It's no, solid. I like, it. I like it. It's strong. Uh, yeah. What about you, Chris? Are you, are you I, more I upset? Care. Less I upset? care. Uh, I, I care too, but I, I but yeah, I care, I don't know but I'm not, leads. I'm not really, I'm not mad at any of the individual guys. Right. Um, I think like, you know, like you go through and okay. Like except for RJ Barrett and O'Shea Brissett, cause he plays for the Raptors. None of those rookies were playing. None of them were coming. Uh, RJ Barrett, because a, his dad is who he is, but also the Knicks need him more than he needs the Knicks. So Right. So he gets to call that shot. But none of those got none of those rookies were playing. Right. Uh, you know, and then you got a new thing where like teams have a history of telling play of exerting pressure on players, particularly non-American players 
to not play for national teams, right? right? Mark Cuban did that mm. to Dirk Nowitzki, who's Dwight Powell's boss. It's Mark Cuban, right? And Dwight right. Powell's in a position where he might start next year. Uh, Shea Gilgis Alexander is in a position where he might start next year. And you know, it's a thing where you know, uh, I got I got a lot to say. May I, may, oh, may I go? Just pop off. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so like you know, like I'm not mad at any of the individual guys. You know, Tristan Thompson who, you know, whatever you think about him as a human, perhaps, has always been amazing about playing for the national he's team. He's played a lot. Yeah, he's played a lot. Yeah. He missed 44 games last season. He would be crazy to play. Right. Dylan Brooks, another guy. Yeah, who, his foot's broken. Yeah, who has played a lot yeah. of, you know, play, played a lot. He, play, he missed he pl- missed all but 18 games last year. Yeah, I know. He, he literally needs a career. Yeah, he, yeah. he cannot play, you know. Uh, yeah. You know, and then you get into guys like, you know, Jamal Murray is going to camp, but not going to play. RJ Barrett injured himself, is going to camp. He's not going to play. Um, you know, I mean, Andrew Wiggins has decided that he's going to do what he's going to do. And I guess God bless him. I hope he figures out how to be an NBA player at some point. Um, yeah. I think he's an interesting one, though, because let's just like hold on Wiggins here for a sec, because I think he was both like the great Canadian hope. Absolutely. So I think yeah. that. I think he's, I've said this a bunch of times, I think he got into a situation where he's so overpaid yeah. that it's really hard for people to like actually equate his value. That's true. Which is much better than an average NBA player. You know, he, like, you know, the I, guy gets buckets. He's, he's yeah. a DeRozan style player. No, I was um, being a dick just now. No, he's no, a, no, it's he's, true. But he's a solid player. But he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a top 50 player. In a yeah, no, I'd say that. But I think the thing is, He's paid like he's a top 20 player. He is. And, and yeah. that's, that's, I mean, we, we're seeing it all over the league with the way the contracts rise. It's really hard to have a valuable player um, after the rookie contract. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, but, but sorry, I, I just wanted to say that about Wiggins. Yeah. No, because it's it's I also point. was really disappointed like early on when, when Wiggins wouldn't play. Yeah. Um, and I think he did play once. He played once. He clashed with Jay Triano, allegedly, is the rumor. Oh, yeah. Oh. And right. uh, he, he played, I think I think it was during, was it, no, it was, it was Jay, I was during a qualifying. He clashed, allegedly, he clashed with Jay Triano. None of us are insiders. We don't know, but that's, yeah. that is. All we know is Jay Triano sat on a play his whole life and he threw an alley-oop. It was actually a goaltending to Tyson Chandler, and it was one of the weirdest plays I've ever seen. It happened two years ago, and I loved it. I loved every minute of it. Um, yeah, but like you know, so I'm not mad at any of these guys, but like the problem is, you know, okay. Also, there's this history with Canadians not playing, right? So Jamal McGuire didn't play in part because he was not wrong that when he was playing, there was still a pretty big bias in national team selection towards white guys from Western Canada. Uh, right. Steve Nash didn't play again. He had some conflicts with people. I think uh, again, but Nash did play. Nash played for a long Sometimes, time. And right. then, and then, and he, then stopped. He stopped pretty, he stopped at one point. I think there was also an issue maybe with his team with Phoenix, not wanting him to play. Uh, you know, we rushed citizenship for Sam Tallenbear. Oh he, my goodness. That he played about bad. three games, uh, you know, got in a fight with Leo. Uh, yeah. I got in a fight with Leo Routens, you know, um, oh my God. which like I, you know, so I think there's this history and it makes Pete Canadian, Basketball fans are really anxious. But I think you look at this. In this time, I don't think it's a Canadian problem. I think it's a FIBA problem. Yes. I think, you know, yeah. I mean, you know, you look this at, is going to where I wanted to get to. But yeah. please, you know, on. Ben Simmons isn't playing for Australia. I mean, the list of players, there seems to be about two dozen. Is Siakam playing for Cameroon? Uh, Cameroon yeah, I think so. or Embiid? Uh, I don't think Cameroon is in. Yeah, I didn't see them there either. Uh, Cameroon is not in. And I think it was partially because they had trouble. They, 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 they couldn't qualify. They couldn't qualify. Yeah, yeah. Um, because they did this weird thing where qualifying meant that mo- all NBA guys and most Euro leaguers couldn't play for most of the qualifying games. Um, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Go on. Cause I, I have some stuff here too, that I think you might just say, yeah, so. <laughs> but like you go through, you go through and you look at like, you know, on team USA, like they've have about two dozen current and former all-stars who've passed on this, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, so I think, you know, they have this thing where it's a six week commitment. Um, and Canada didn't need to do that. They did that because that's what the USA was doing. But it's a six week commitment. It's in, uh, it's in China with warm up games in Australia and it bumps right up against training camp. And, you know, I think, I think if it was earlier in the summer, I think if it was a three or four week commitment, I think if the thing was in Europe, which is no one's fault or in North America, I think it would have been a very different situation. But like you put all those things together, I mean, you put all those things together and yeah, a lot of guys are going to go, holy shit, six weeks and I got to go to Australia and I got to go to China. And then I come yeah. back and then I come back and I'm basically still jet lag walking into training camp. Like, I don't I don't blame them. And, you know, obviously it's not like, oh, you can't put it 
in Asia, but like, I think, I think you can't put it in September, you know, like a hundred percent. And, yeah. and, and I think, you know, like you look at how this thing is working. I think people really has to rethink how they're going to do this because they lay, you know, they've lost so much NBA star powers. Like, you know, as I said, you know, I think France has a couple guys, NBA guys aren't playing, um, you know, and, and you know, France has the second most, um, like not including these, the States, Canada has the most yeah. NBA players than France, than Australia, than Australia, you know, Australia doesn't have Ben Simmons. Like I, th- I think the problem isn't Canada this time. It's this tournament. I agree. And I think, I think they really, the next time around, they're gonna have to really think about how they do this. Okay. So, so I'm just going to add on to this and, and, and Kev, I'm sure you want to get in here too, but I'll, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll just say this. Um, I think the NBA needs to acknowledge its power. And yes. its strength. Yes. And it needs to like knock on FIBA's door and say, yeah. wink, wink, we're going to run this from now on. Yes. And we're going to make yeah. sure it's within yeah, our yeah, yeah. schedule. And I hate to be like well, a bully, but basically be like, listen, the other leagues are the ones that are going to be inconvenienced because the majority of the best players, and, and especially as the game becomes more and more and more international, yeah. we're going to get to a place like you really where... really need to look at FIFA, right? Like, that's yes. the model, isn't it? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean... I mean, not for... Not FIFA for is everything. not a model for almost anything, but in terms <laughs> yeah, of how to yeah, schedule exactly, it, yes, yeah. correct. Oh, I'm pretty yeah. sure they're choosing the right places for the World Cups, and there's no <laughs> oh, scandal yes, there, yeah, you know? So, nothing, I don't know what you guys are saying. Wrong with work this is Freddie trying to avoid getting a drone strike at his house. Yeah. Um, Seth Ryder is rummaging through my garbage right now. <laughs> Peering uh, up at me. Uh, sorry, go on, Kev. Uh, no, I think I think that's like I think I think you really nailed it with the NBA. I, I think generally speaking, if we want these wide ranging tournaments, which that seems to be, you know, like so if people want it. Yeah, no, game, I, I want like, it. Like, I want, I want that. And I think, I think that's it. I think the NBA, I think everyone needs to acknowledge that the NBA is the league. Um, I think, mm-hmm. you know, all the European leagues that are no slices in their own rights and the Chinese basketball association, like they stand to gain from it too. If everyone just sort of comes together. And oh, absolutely. Yes. Even if it was know. like in the middle of Eurobasket, it would still be better than bumping up against training camp. Yeah. I, I hate to be yeah. like, like, yeah, trust me, I'm Canadian and I'm, I'm with, I'm with Chris's whole rant about not being respected and being from Canada. But, but I think that you got to acknowledge when you're like the massive league. Yeah. But like yeah. the way, the way qualification worked, uh, like it's not like other countries benefited because their NBA players couldn't play. And a lot of the guys who were playing in the Euro, in the Euro league, they couldn't play. Right. Yeah. So, so those guys who were playing to... in sec in domestic leagues and it was G league guys and stuff like that. It, yeah. it didn't work for anyone. You have to clear house. Yeah. You have to clear, be fully clear from the NBA schedule and, and all FIBA things need to operate like, but like, between I don't know July and September. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. I think it needs to happen. I think that I think if this thing started earlier in the off in the off season, I think if it started at the end of July, you would have. I mean, yeah, okay. So guys were in the playoffs, and then they don't. Want to, and then that, and then you run into that problem. Okay, which but, is fine. Which is fine. It's only going to be two or three teams. But or like, two, two, yeah, exactly. Two or four teams. But it's not going to be the whole. But league. now it's everybody. Yeah, now it's everybody. Yeah. So. Um. Okay. I feel like we we beat the shit out of FIBA. Yeah, I feel good. Um, about that. <laughs> Let's uh let's let's hop to my my next question here. Um uh well, you know what? I guess we already touched on this a little bit, but uh I I have the list here if, if you guys want me to 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 run it down, but who are the mm-hmm. top 3 unrestricted free agents? Man. Right. So, um, so Anthony uh, Davis obviously, but barely. Anthony Davis is like I I'm not even counting that. Yeah, yeah. why cuz you think he's going to yeah, sign with LA? Sign. I, I, like I, I mean, or you know, he'll just go to Portland. I mean, yeah, that, would I mean be fucking that would be so cool. But yes, I, that'd be I, so great. Um, but I'll, 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 I'll read through some of these guys and you yeah. guys can, can jump in whenever you want. So unrestricted. Sure. Um, we got Kyle Lowry, mm-hmm. Paul Millsap, um, Hassan Whiteside, Chandler Parsons, Marcus soul, Serge, Danilo Gallinari, oh. Jeff Teague, Derek favors, Alan Crabb, Oh, Bismack Biombo, people going wild for that. Uh, we got a Kent Bazemore, Evan Turner, Goran Dragic, uh, um, Tristan Thompson, Reggie Jackson, Iguodala, if he's not retired, Jan Mahimi, who's finally getting off that awful contract, Marcus Morris, Wowie Zowie. 
Brandon Knight. Uh, hey, man, we better trade Lowry so we can get a hold of Brandon Knight, right? Um, <laughs> Mason Plumley, Marvin Williams, Eric Gordon, Michael Kidd Gilchrist. I mean, like, you know, there might be some interesting guys here, and I yeah. think the actual yeah. conversation is probably going to center around which restricted guys, yeah. like Jalen Brown, yeah. Yeah. do you want to just yeah. make Boston pay for or whatever? Yeah, but I, yeah. Think, I think the restricted guys are super interesting. And, you know, there's, again, Miles Plumley, Courtney Lee. There, there might be, like, younger guys who are... There's some role guys. Yeah, like, there's, there's role guys. Exactly. So, I don't know. Any names... I mean, also, like, I'm not out on Whiteside just yet. He's, like, mm. had... He's had some swings and misses, yep. for sure. But I feel like... I don't know. I don't know how likely it is, but I feel like there's that place he could fit and have, like, the late career Zebo bump. Yeah, I mean, anytime a player is described as having like a bad temperament. I am mm-hmm. uh, always in their corner automatically. <laughs> yeah. My instinct is to judge the person who decided to label them. That. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I agree. But yeah, there's some other guys like Bellinelli, uh, Montrez, but then there's yeah, restricted. like Ingram and ball. Right. Or both yeah. guys where it's like, there could be some discrepancy as far as like, if does New Orleans want to pay those guys. Um, yeah, totally. Like if you're Sacramento or something, you could be like New Orleans is not cashing in for both those guys. No, with Zion yeah. and you know, um, no, they're good. Sacramento they're, also has Bogdan too, don't they? That's uh, right. Who's restricted? I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, don't forget Dwight Howard. You got Aaron Funny. Baines. Yeah. Uh, um, oh yeah. Alex Len. Uh, probably not in the league anymore. <laughs> I think. Oh, Stanley. Uh, actually, Stanley Johnson. That can't be right. Was it only one year? No, yeah, like, he's gonna. I think it's a player option. I thought so too. Um. Oh, oh, sorry. It's a player option. Yeah. And then, oh, DeMarcus Cousins. Yep. Um, yep. But, I mean, it seems like nobody wanted him this year. Okay. I mean, yeah, it depends. If he if he has a year this, if if, if, if he had, does what he was supposed to do last year, stays healthy, is the best trad big in the NBA, then, then yeah, he, he has a season. If he does not, then he does. Then this happens again. Yeah. Um, okay, I feel like I basically made us all pretty sad. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not sure what the goal there was, but if anyone does have well, a top it's, three. It's such an odd class. Yeah. It's such an odd class. I think the player options are going to get kind of interesting of who like decides to go test the market. You've got like DeMar, you've got Porter. Um, who's right. the other player? I like this. There's That's some guys a great who might point. Opt Hayward's not opting out, I don't think. No, I mean, uh, unless unless he has a big comeback season. Million. Oh, my God. Yeah. 31 million. Wow. Oh my God. That's, a, that's a lot of money. But it's a good point about DeMar, because DeMar might be like, hey, I don't want to be here for Pop's last disgruntled years. I want yeah. to, I, and also, I don't want to risk getting injured at 31, so like, you know, if I can, if I can get paid twenty million dollars a year for four years, yeah. I'm taking it. Which I'm sure he. Likes. Yeah, and, you and know, if he's the only guy I'm in the sure market, he yeah, he looks at that yeah. class and he goes, "Okay, well, who's my competition? Really, it's what Eric Gordon and Danilo Gallinari, yeah. kind of like, yeah, yeah." yeah I, I, t- if I'm, if I'm him, I, I, I take that shot for sure. Um. Okay. Uh. I think. I think we're good. Um, yeah. Yeah. Of that class, I will say I'm going to say Lowry because I think you know. Obviously, I said I don't think the Raptors should resign him, but somebody will want him, and he is a valuable player somewhere, 100%. especially in that class. Uh, Eric Gordon is a yeah. you know is a great he's a great team's third option. Yes, uh, and I think you know Danilo Gallinari somebody will pay. Yeah. Somebody I will mean, give him Montrez money. Harrell too. We'll see yeah. what, see what type of year he has as a starter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he has a good if he has a good year as a starter, then I think yeah, like even if he's like really happen for him. If he like rounds out to like an average starter, I sure. mean that's pretty good. He's still pretty sure. young. So. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so you guys ready to play a game or what? Yeah, let's do it. Let's Ooh. go. All right, Matt. Um, you probably know this game. We've done it before. It's uh, it's called um, how many people can you name on this roster? Okay, oh, um, Christ, the answer is zero. It's gonna be bad. Okay, uh, uh, the game sometimes is very uh, short. Okay, um, <laughs> basically, Kev, I feel like you've you've played this before. Um, All right. So I've picked three teams. Okay, and they are? Uh, they are, and you can choose whichever one you think you can name okay. at least one player. Uh, so as soon as you name a wrong player, yeah, um, game's over. Okay. Okay? So I, I made it pretty hard, okay. I think. Uh, you know, maybe I should soften this up a <laughs> okay, bit. Okay, well, no. But you're like, we've, we've committed. Just, yeah, we've just, committed. Let's do it. Phoenix, OKC, Fuck. or Memphis? I picked the bottom of the West. 
Okay. Um, I thought the bottom of the East was too hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> if you're like Cleveland or Charlotte, it's like, oh God. No, oh, dear. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so what team do you want to do you want to pick? I guess I guess I'll go OKC. OKC. All right. So I'm on OKC. Um, okay, great. <laughs> Matt's got some weird hillbilly music. <laughs> nice and scary. <laughs> So name start by naming one player on Oklahoma City. Shea Gilgis Alexander. Uh, yes. Stephen Adams. Yes. Um. <laughs> if, if you get to five, I think you're like rocking it. To be uh, honest. Yeah. I mean, now now I'm starting to now now I'm starting to sweat though. Uh. <laughs> I know. Is it Dilo Gallinari? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, nice. You're doing good. This is good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but now, now I'm really starting to bump up against it. Uh, Christ, <laughs> this music's good, dude. <laughs> this music's hype. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm trying. Like, oh, I am. Um, I, I like. I'm like. I'm like. Okay. Like, who's a who's a power forward on that team? I have no goddamn idea. Um. Lugens Dort is on a two-way. What's uh, sorry? Who L- is Lugens Dort on a two-way? Yes. Uh, nice one. Oh my God, that was. You mean you basically that should count as ten. Um. Oh, and for the pronunciation too. So yeah. you're at four. Um. I'm gonna do little timers on you. So yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. in between, you got. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you thirty seconds. I mean, I I think I think that might be it. Um. You should at least name one wrong player, because that's when it's over. Thabo Cephalosha. Cephalosha, I believe he's on Utah. So I yeah, think I that's, think he was I think traded. That's wrong. Okay. Cephalosha, Cephalosha, Cephalosha. Um, hey man, you nailed it. There's, yeah. there's, there's okay. One player is going to make you very angry. Yeah. And there's two players that yeah. make you a bit angry. The okay. one is Chris Paul. Oh uh, shit! Yes, yeah, uh, that was like right in front of my face. I know. And then uh, the two are Schroeder and Nerlens Noel. Oh, okay. I bumped into Nerlens Noel coming out of a men's room once, and I said to him, "Holy shit, you're fucking tall." Uh, <laughs> and he's like, "Just he's just like, yeah. Well, what do you think about the single tier?" I was like, <laughs> and he was like, "Yeah." And I was like, "Sorry, that was weird." And then I just kept going. It was at a nice. party. I was I was a bit drunk. Hey man. Uh, all right. Okay, Kev, you ready? Yeah. So, do you want Memphis oh, or Phoenix? Oh my god. Um, I'll go Memphis. Okay. All right. Whenever you're ready. All right. Jonas Valanciunas. Yes. Um, Jaron Jackson Jr. Um, yes. Um, uh, Ja Morant. Uh, yep. Um, oh my god. Imagine if Kev's like looking at a computer and he's like pretending to struggle. <laughs> I'm just Googling, <laughs> just like really acting hard right now. <laughs> um, holy shit, am I out already? I can't, honestly. You got, there must be someone I'm not thinking You got of. JV, you got JJJ, and you also named Ja Morant. Ja Morant, yeah. Um, is Chandler Parsons still on Memphis? Uh, no. Wait. Dang. No, I don't think he is. Cause was, oh man, who the hell is there? Okay, uh, Kev, that's thirty seconds. You want to? I'm, I'm out. Although I'm I feel out. like that- I kind of felt like you were right about Parsons, but I mean, he must be playing somewhere else. Um, so I would say the notables that you missed. Um. I don't know if there is any really. Um, maybe uh, Joaquin Noah. Um, oh, did not know that. Yeah, yeah. It, it, Canada's you know, Brandon Clark. Yeah, Brandon. Yeah, you got Brandon Clark, Dylan Brooks. Um, you know, I'll say this. I felt. I thought you were gonna get Bruno. Oh. Shit. Oh my God! Shame on me. I thought you were gonna get Bruno. Um, also, uh, Crowder is on Memphis. Yeah, Crowder. But there's a bunch of people like Crowder, Iguodala, and stuff who are like are. Very temporarily there, right? Yeah, I don't. I don't think Iguodala is staying on that bus. Um, and I feel like it's only fair, Matt. Do you want to try Phoenix? Uh, okay, it it's might be really, really hard. I'm really curious okay. to see how this is gonna go. All right. 
Okay. Penis. Do they, do they, okay, wait. <laughs> they have like a star player, right? Yeah. Okay. They got two of them. Can I have one hint? Can I ask one question about it? Sure. Is the star kind of, is it a, a European player? Or? Um, no. It's not. No. I want to say Sarich. Is that his name? Sarich? Sarich. Sarich? He plays yeah. for, wait. He does play for Phoenix. Really? Oh, shit. Does he? Oh, my God. You just rocked me on my own game. <laughs> Although, I'm, oh, yeah, he's here. <laughs> okay. Cheers. I lose. I knew that well he was somewhere done, on the lower, the lower ones. Um, shit. Okay. Oh, wow. This is hard. Um, All right. Timer's starting, Pop. Okay. Uh, Booker? Booker, yes. Holy shit. Woo-hoo! Okay. 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 You're rocking this. Um, I think... Th- I always, okay, this person I think does because whenever I hear it, I go, Rubio. Nice, Ricky Rubio. Rubio. Yeah, that, that was you're, right. on, you're on fire, dude. Oh, I don't know if I know you're anymore. Clutch after that. player. Um, uh, is it like the uh, okay? Uh, is it Ubre? Ubre Ju- Junior. I'm giving Ubre. it to you. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah Aubrey. Ubre. Jesus, I can't believe I know this. That's many four players. players on Phoenix. <laughs> That's really good, dude. Uh, Dare I say shame I'm on you? Very impressed. I don't know if I know any more though, guys. Uh, yeah. Um, is is Grievous Vasquez there? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know where Grievous Vasquez is. Uh, he's not there. <laughs> yeah, he's in the NBA I front no office. Well, I can't believe I got that many. I know. Uh, well done. That was yeah, well done. Good job, Matt. Sorry, DeAndre Matt. Aiden's the first overall oh. pick. I thought, but I mean, you rocked it. Like, Holy shit. Um, okay, cool. Uh, I think that's uh, that's going to be it for the NBA talk. But uh, we do have a couple quickish questions. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. So let's wrap this pot up with some silly, dumbass questions. As Love if, it. As if my questions weren't dumb already, but we're going to get a bit <laughs> dumber. Um, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. Maddie, what do you give me that sting? Quickish questions. Oh, <laughs> oh wow! No follow up. Cheers. <laughs> wow, Matt. Quickish questions. There. I got it at the end. There, I got it at the end. Yeah, that was awesome, man. Yeah. Congrats. Um, okay, now I'm mad at you again. <laughs> um, that, that voice just pisses Fraser me off. Fraser Young. Fraser Young. <laughs> Fraser Young, uh, comedian, very funny guy. If you listen to this pod, you're going to be pissed. <laughs> okay. All right. uh, how dare you, Matt? Um, all right. So uh, for quickish questions, uh, very simple rule. You just got to answer as quick as you can. Um, I'll I'm a try very not slow to, man, so that's gonna be challenging. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll try ahead. not to stumble too much in my in my question asking. <laughs> All right, uh, there's no wrong answer, so just the speed is the name of the game. Okay, don't no, phone a friend. friend. There it is. There, there you go. I was waiting for that. Uh, okay, <laughs> Kev, we're going to you first. Okay. Uh, we already touched on this, but I gotta respect the question. Why won't Canadian stars represent our country in the FIBA World Cup? Uh, I think it's because they're being paid um, by uh, by Swiss Chalet, uh, and they're going to be <laughs> spokespeople for the company, um, and they need to keep them all within the country uh, to prevent any visa issues for the resids on uh, on when they replay the commercials. Wow. That's such a weird <laughs> answer, and I love you. I like the big chicken conspiracy. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, that in got the pocket into of big, big chicken. chicken. That got into big chicken. And, and, and you know, if we're talking Swiss Chalet, big sauce. Um, big yeah. sauce indeed. Uh, big sauce. Okay, uh, Chris. Yo. Um, breakout players this year predictions, but like real breakout, like not established players. So I think what, what the answer this guy's going for is like a player that people don't know, but they will. Uh, I'm going to go, I mean, people kind of already know him and I've talked about him a lot because I like his name and I like him. Shea Gilgis Alexander. I think, yep. I think he's yeah. going to be, that's a good pick. I think he's going to be a tremendous player this year. Um, I think also, and I mean, again, this is probably my homer to stand at the show. OG and Nobi. I think like yeah. people, people in Toronto know him. I think people in the NBA are going to become quite, that's aware a really of him. good one too, because he yeah. was, he was so he's good in the year. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Kev. Oh, I say he's going to get those minutes. Yeah. That's yeah. All I said. Um, okay, Matt. Yeah. So, uh, player or a team that will shut down Zion. Player or team that will shut down Zion? Or like the best team to shut down Zion. Oh, okay. Or best player. 
Okay. Um, I think the team to shut him down in the West will be, I think it's going to be Denver. Okay. I like yeah. it. Um, all right. So, uh, Kevin. <clears throat> um, actually, let's. This is a fun one. So let's all let's all take a stab at this. Um, all right. Kevin, predict a headline from this upcoming NBA season. Um, Doc Rivers: colon, I would have played tonight. Oh yes! Wow, that's a yeah. big one. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes, Kevin. Okay, Chris, give me a headline from this year. <laughs> um. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna go uh LeBron, it's just not working out like we'd hoped. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, Ooh, are, I'm liking these uh, LA daggers. I'm looking, I'm looking forward to both of these. <laughs> oh, I lo- I'm looking forward to those too. Uh Kevin. Or sorry, uh Matt Matt. Matt what what is a what is a headline? Oh, you want me to say one? You want me to say I one. I want you to say one. That's right. Don't stall. <laughs> Don't you phone a friend on me. <laughs> okay. Bust it out. Okay. Um I'm gonna say uh Anthony Davis. This is my team now. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. I'll go a little less serious. I'm going to go Ricky Rubio. Yes. When yeah. I cut my ponytail, I felt like I cut my leg off. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm into it. I'm into it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just a bit of out of context being like, whoa. Yeah. Sir. Um, okay. That was good. That was good. All right. Let's, uh, we can all have some fun with this one too. Uh, so we'll go one by one. So, uh, Kev, I'm going to start with you. So pick one player. Yeah. We're looking for the starting five uh, yeah. Simpsons characters uh, basketball team. So, oh. and I, I did some following up uh, on this. So uh, I said, uh, which, uh, like, which characters in the Simpsons can play basketball or who is most like Homer type thing? And their answer okay. is... Uh, uh, Gary Wright, I jumped in with, uh, I think five best Simpsons characters to be your starting five <laughs> with reasons why. Oh God. So okay, yeah. So cool. we're talking Simpsons characters yep. that can yeah, ball. Yeah, right. yeah, sure. Oh, so wow. Kev. Okay. Uh, okay. I'll start with, Oh, um, um, Frederick Tatum at center. That's a pretty he's good one. The, he's the Simpsons, Mike Tyson yep. knockoff. Yeah. 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 He'd, he'd be great. <laughs> no, he's an all around yeah. athlete. <laughs> yeah. Um, Chris, uh, I'm gonna go with Ned Flanders. Uh, wow. I, think, I think he has the game of like one of those white guys who's killer in college and then doesn't quite make it in the NBA, like oh, a like Jimmer that. Fernet yeah. kind of game. But like he can but shoot. He went through prep school and college too, isn't for he? Christianity. Yeah, he's in. He's he's, he's <laughs> he is rip. He's in incredible shape. Uh, and I th- I think he, he's one of those. He's one of those guys who can probably shoot the shit out of the ball. I love. Yeah, okay, I, this is good. good. All right, Matt. So we, it looks like we got our shooting guard. We got our we got maybe center, or maybe small ball center with yeah. uh, Dredrick Tatum. Um, who, 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 who are you choosing? Um, I'm choosing uh, groundskeeper Willie, and he's essentially going to be oh, the, the PJ. T- I knew you were going to pick a Chuck Hayes <laughs> yeah, style. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's good. Yeah, like he like he's like that's a, exactly what I was thinking. Uh, Ke- Kev used to love and the just the, trash talking to. I feel like yeah. you have a really good trash talk. Kevin used to love the Dexter <laughs> Pittman uh, style guy who goes and he elbows someone in the brain. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, this a bit. This a bit out there. But uh, let me drop some Professor Frank on you guys, because oh, okay. I, I think mm-hmm. I think he's he's got some flubber in there. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah sure. Doing the flubber. flubber. Sure. Listen, I'm gonna bring up flubber in Chernobyl every episode, Matt. That's what go, that's what's up. Fair enough. I'm into it. Um, okay, uh, we're, we're, we all get to go again because this is fun. Let's round out this motherfucking team. Right. Um, Kev, so I, I'm saying Professor Frank is like a point guard, but you know he he can do a lot of things. So so maybe not necessarily, but. Uh, yeah, who's gonna who's gonna be number five on the roster? Uh, I'm gonna say um, if if this is permissible, I'm gonna say sober Barney Gumble when he was training for. Holy NASA. shit! I was gonna say sober Barney. Wow. wow. Okay, so that's okay, but I, I'm I'm not done here. So let's do coach. Who's the coach, Chris? Oh man, um, I think it's Principal Skinner. Yeah, 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 he'd be a no nonsense guy, yeah. but uh, but also in the end, be good because players could walk over him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I, th- I think I think it's Principal Skinner. <laughs> He's got that duality. Yeah. Um, Matt, what about an owner? Who's the owner of this franchise? You know, I guess it's easy to say Burns, but I don't want to pick Burns as the owner. I yeah. want to pick. Um, it's gonna be friggin' a poo. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I love yeah. it. He's got he's got the money from the. 
I'd say, does he have a franchise uh, out on the Quickie Mart? Oh, I'm sure he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure he's just, doing quite well. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I imagine it being like one of those Filipino League teams yes. where it's just like the, the sponsor <laughs> is the team name and it's just Quickie Mart. Oh, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, and then I'll say, um, you know, I think the uh, the commentators yep. uh, or the commentator, uh, I'm going to go Troy McGuire. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, f- I feel like he's he j- he's just a, a working actor. He'd be uh, able to rock yeah. that. I'm are, saying, you seeing, are you seeing this as Herbie Coon or as Matt Devlin? Uh, he's my Matt Devlin. Nice. Is is Mo our Jack? Uh, Disco yeah. Stew is our Jack. <laughs> Disco, <laughs> Disco <laughs> Stew is our Disco Jack. <laughs> Do we have a Drake? Oh wow! Wait, uh, would it be like the would would Bart was that like cartoon cool dog? <laughs> <laughs> Poochie. Poochie. Yeah. Uh, okay, I think um, we have spiraled into uh, silliness here, and uh, yeah, that's going to mark the end of the pod. I love it. All right. Um, Beautiful. Chris, you're amazing. Uh, Thank we, you. I, I know we, we plugged Medium a little bit, but please plug it again so yeah, people can find uh, your stuff. Follow me on Twitter at Chris Dart, C-O-T-F. Uh, I'm writing on Medium again, doing some sports stuff, medium.com slash at Chris Dart. Also, if I can plug someone else, uh, this hat, which they are going to show, uh, on on the Facebook is uh, at Big Nish Brand. It's like he does like uh, basically Aboriginal styled lo- like Eastern Woodlands school or East- or Woodland school like logo flips. Uh, definitely get at him at Instagram and buy this hat. I have the shirt too. Uh, his shit is dope. Yeah, amazing. I love it. Yeah. Um, Great, Kev. You, you you got anything going on? Uh, yeah. Listen. So I I was uh, just just digging around because uh, someone asked me to show them something I wrote on the Beaverton way back when and I found this choose your own adventure thing I wrote and I really realized how much time I put into that thing uh, like an inordinate amount of time for a stupid oh, yeah. joke so if everyone wants to go give that a read and just like play through it a bunch of times you know really be really oh, yeah. be appreciative I remember cool. that yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm actually going to do a, just kind of like a friendly plug here because I think uh, people should really check this out. So um, he's been on the podcast, I think, twice. I went to college with him. Tristan Douglas is putting on an art show called oh, yeah. Dunk. Um, mm-hmm. And it's bas- yeah, it's basketball-related art. I'm into it. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's at the Fountain Gallery, which is 1261 uh, Dundas Street West. And it opened on August 1st. I'm not uh, sure how long it runs exactly. But uh, well, go go check out that show and buy some basketball art. I absolutely uh, in, in the year of our Toronto champions. Yeah, All right? absolutely. For I sure. Agree. Sounds great. Uh, cool. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, thanks so much for listening to the podcast, everyone. Um, yeah. You know, like, rate, support. Yeah, uh, if you can. If just, you know. you know, help us out if you can. Yeah. yeah. You know? Um, <laughs> cool. Get those subscribers up on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll be back for episode, uh, this episode 117, so we'll be back for episode uh, 118 next Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. Hi. See you later. It's the Confederacy of Dunks Basketball Podcast. 